What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. And today we're looking at Fujifilm's XRAW Studio. We're gonna be using the X-T2. We're gonna look at some files and basically this software that they just created allows you to use your camera as the processor to process RAW files, but you're gonna get the exact same JPEG quality that you're getting from this camera and able to actually still shoot RAW and change some of the settings afterwards, which is pretty cool. Obviously you have all the film simulations built into Lightroom and stuff, but you don't have the exact processing that's going on in the camera. So I have a feeling this might appeal to some people, but we'll take a look at it and see what's up. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go into the menu, go down to the wrench, go to connection settings, and I already have mine set, but where it says PC connect mode, you don't wanna set this to USB raw convert slash backup restore, and this is gonna let this connect to the computer and use this as the processor. Once you have that set in the menu, you're gonna plug the USB port into your computer, and it's gonna connect. All right, so once you've got the camera connected through USB and you have it set to raw convert mode, you need to download the software and unfortunately it's only available for Mac right now, so you Windows people are gonna have to wait a little bit longer, I think somewhere like in the early of next year. But right now it only works for Mac and I'll put a link in the description where to download it. But once you've got it downloaded and installed in your application folder, you're gonna open it up. And for some unknown reason, it always loads small. It never loads full screen for me for some reason. You just have to expand it. Anyway, I want to talk about some of the settings and what we've got here in front of us before I get into actual images. Top left, you can see the camera that's connected, the battery level. We have our source image folder. I wish you could scale this down a little bit. It's kind of small if you're trying to go through your files. Obviously, you pop these down, you can see a little bit better, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to click on one shoot that I did. Um, this shoot was actually a shoot I did where I wanted to talk about why I think the Fuji 56 millimeter is probably my favorite lens of all time. Haven't made that video yet, but it's coming. And we're gonna look at some of these images first. So obviously left-hand side is kind of your image information. And then on the right-hand side, we've got all the settings that we're gonna use to convert our RAW files with. All of these settings are the same settings that are inside of the camera where you can set up for your JPEG profile. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at one of the RAW files first. So we'll just click on this. And obviously it tells the file size, the date it was taken, the camera, the aperture, the shutter speed. And that aperture is wrong because I shot this with the 56 millimeter F1.2 and there's no way I was shooting at F1 because the lens doesn't go down that low. Anyway, that looks like a glitch. Fuji might need to fix that. On the right hand side, you can see how this was shot. Everything was just kind of left off and we have Provia as our standard profile. Um, if you had classic chrome or something like that turned on, it'll actually load in with classic chrome on it. And that's what I wanna do with this image. But first let's look at zooming in. So obviously we can zoom in one to one, I guess this is what that is. You can zoom back out by clicking that. Or you can click on the magnifying glass and zoom in. Or you can go to an actual percentage up here if you want to. And the hand just lets you move around. Now what I wanna do is make some changes here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a couple of the options you can change. I actually really like how this image is as far as exposure and stuff already. I wouldn't really change too much but we can change the EV, so I might lower it down a little bit, just bring the exposure down a tad. Um, the dynamic range we can't change, it was taken at DR100, so film simulation I'm gonna change to classic chrome. And then the grain I'm gonna leave off. White balance, I'm gonna make it a little bit warmer, so I'm gonna manually dump in the number here, so let's do 5900K, just to warm it up a bit because the sun was hitting your face. So that looks good. Um, in the white balance shift, you can actually change. I'm not gonna touch that, I'm gonna leave right in the middle. Highlight tone, we can drop the highlights a tad, just negative one. You don't have too much room to move with that like you would in Lightroom, but that's all the camera gives you anyway. Shadow tone, I'm pretty happy with where that is, but if we lower it down here, you can see we can bring some of that shadow detail back. I'm not gonna do that for this image. I'm happy with where it is at zero. Color, we can lower the color back a bit. That's just the saturation. Sharpness, we can bump the sharpness up plus two. I don't know what ISO I shot this at. It doesn't really say. That'd be nice if that was something they'd add in here. But uh, for noise reduction, you can bring that down. I usually turn it kind of off. I don't really care. I kind of like having a bit of grain in there versus kind of a mushy processed grain. Anyway, we'll zoom in here, and I really like how that looks right now. Um, you can rotate the image and stuff like that. Uh, right now, the only way to convert out of the X-T2 is JPEG. I know that with the GFX version of the software, well, it's the same version, it's just that different cameras connected, you can actually output a TIFF file. Now, one thing that a lot of people are kind of mad about that I've been noticing on forums and stuff is that you can't actually export to a DNG, which would be nice. 
with all of these settings. Uh, only a JPEG right now, but a lot of people are gonna be happy with that because now they don't have to worry about Lightroom's crappy processing on RAW files or Photoshop. Um, there's not gonna be all these crazy, like, oh, use this or use that, or use Iridient Developer and stuff like that. You can just use this. I kind of feel like this is a slow way of doing it, but you're gonna get the exact quality that the camera's dumping out in the JPEG with the option of being able to change white balance and the things that I just showed you. So we can go up to Save Profile. I already made one called Sunset 1. We'll make this Sunset 2. And what we can do is we can zoom back out here and I'm gonna go to another image that was similar to this one. It's hard to tell because the lighting would have been a little different, but we can open up this shot here. And in the profile that we made for the last shot, we can use it on this shot. So basically you just have to click on it here. So click Sunset 2. And this will create the exact same profile for this image that we did for the last one. So once you get all your settings set and you want to convert this as a JPEG, you just go down here to convert. And it does it, processes it pretty quick. And then it dumps it right beside the raw file. So we have the raw file here with our settings that we just made. We have the original JPEG that was taken. So this was the original JPEG it exported with the raw file. And then we have our new JPEG with the new settings in it. So taking that profile that I just saved, we can dump that on top of any other shot here. So let's take this shot for instance. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply the exact same settings that we just did with the last one by clicking on Sunset 2. That was a profile we made. That might not match up for this image. You might have to make a bit of adjustments, but that's not too bad. And again, we can go to Convert. And it's gonna dump that JPEG right next to it in the same folder. Now the question that I had was, is there any way to do batch processing? Because this is very slow, and if you had a lot of images, it wouldn't be that ideal. You can close out all the JPEGs here. Basically highlight all your RAW files, hold shift down. So you want to batch process all of these, click on your profile, and you can go convert. And it's going to convert all seven of these images. So if you had a whole string of images, it would go through and convert them all. And that's how you do batch processing. Oh, one more thing I wanted to show. Actually, a couple more things I want to show. If you go down here where it says JPEG, it'll actually just show you the raw files only, and then you don't have the option of being able to click around on any of the JPEGs if you just wanted to see the raw files. So this is just raw files here, but if you click back on the JPEG, you'll be able to see all the JPEGs. Okay, so if you want to see like a before and after, you can actually go up here, click VA, and then the image on the left is the original file and the image on the right is your adjusted file. So say we wanted to lower the exposure a little bit, change our white balance a little bit, sharpen it up a little bit. You now kind of have an option of seeing what you started with to what you've changed. Maybe it helps you out, I don't know, but there is that option and I thought I would show you. All right, I'm Future Lee, you're wondering why things have changed up, but I actually uploaded the video a few minutes ago and realized that I did this entire test on USB 2. So this is actually the cable you need to plug in, not the USB 2 that I did. So don't judge it based off how slow it is in the video, but everything still applies for how it works. Okay, so make sure to plug your camera into USB 3, flip it on. So just have some random shots in here from a shoot that I did. We're just gonna take one of these raw files here and I'm gonna show you how much faster this actually is to process compared to through USB 2. So we can change that stuff, change our white balance, sharpness. We can even bump our EV up a little bit actually. But as you can see, it's quite a bit faster, processes things quite a bit quicker. And I just wanna make sure I showed you this before you watch the rest of the video. All right guys, that's just kind of a quick look at Fujifilm X-Raw Studio. I don't know if it's for me, it's kind of a weird workflow, obviously bringing your files into your computer and then having to actually still plug the camera in, using the camera to process the raw file. And I mean, if you want the utmost best JPEG quality you're gonna get, this might be the best way to do it. Cause I know a lot of people complain that, you know, Lightroom and stuff doesn't really look that good. And a lot of people use Iridium Developer to process the raw files cause they like that better. This is another alternative, it's obviously kind of slower, like I said, because you got to plug the camera in and stuff like that. 
And another thing is you can't even just do it straight off the SD card. It has to be imported first. So I don't know, it's kind of weird. You can't export DNGs, you can't export TIFFs. It's just a JPEG only. That said, you're gonna get the identical image quality that you're gonna get straight out of the camera when it exports a JPEG, which might be a huge bonus to some people. But for me right now, I don't think I'm gonna use it. I thought I'd look at it and kind of do a little walkthrough with you guys to show you what it's about. And uh, yeah, unfortunately it's not out for Windows yet, but like I said, I'll put a link in the description where to download for you Mac users. And yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. I'll see you in the next one.